Hey, 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 welcome to People Think About It. Uh, we're gonna, we got our special guests in the house today. I have my brother Tawan in the house. We got our co-host, uh, Dominique, and we have Miss Audrey back with us. And today on People Think About It, we're gonna talk about how do you protect your peace? And also we're gonna touch on being having vulnerability with your mate or as a woman how do you allow your man to have vulnerability with you so we're going to touch on those subjects today and we're going to start off uh with the little bit how do you protect your peace so let, let's start off with one of our guests uh you want to go let's go bro what, what, how do you protect your peace um hi everybody Hi. <laughs> um, protecting my peace is so very important because um, it's a great course or center to operate from. And one of the ways that I do it is I monitor my emotional state. Okay. Right? Because my emotional state will, will create an energy that will take me out of my peace. And I also learned how to. Um, through the spirit of uh, discernment, being able to discern, you know, the other energy that's around me. And there is another principle called projection, where I learned to defend myself or protect myself where individuals cannot project their issues on me. Mm-hmm. And I do everything through prayer and meditation. So let's let's go with our next guest, Miss Audrey. How do, how do you how do you protect your peace? Um, when I discernment is is a good one. When I discern, when I when I find out people have ill intentions, their energy is bad. I will back up all the way back because my peace is so important to me as well. And sometimes when you see people that's always complaining, they always got some negativity going on. You stay away from the people. So I just I stay away from them. Like the minute I realize that you're about nothing but bad energy yeah. and a lot of nonsense. I'm out. I feel crazy coming on. I'm gone. Mm-hmm. So I, I just, I, I just do not hang around them type of people. Like, and, and you'll know. Like they can only keep that stuff hidden for so long, and then the real them pop out. Right. When it pops out, you know, make your move. Now you'll find that some people they just attract that kind of stuff. Right. But then right. You gotta ask them, ask yourself, what, what is it about them that attracts that kind of stuff? Right. And I know, I know our co-host, our co-host really likes these kind of subjects because <laughs> she's so centered with herself. So we're going to go, hey, Miss Dominique, how do you protect your peace? Um, I cut everybody up. Y'all know I'm kind of quick with it. No, but. So you miss scissors hand. Oh, very much so. Dominique okay. scissor hand. Dominique <laughs> scissor hand. That's me. That's your girl. But no, um, in all honesty, um, like Taiwan said, to kind of piggyback off of that, um, just understanding what I'm willing to allow from people, right? I know that, so I'll tell my friends, hey, it's okay, you can call me, but you need to ask for permission before you start dumping on me. Don't right. call me dumping all your problems on me. Ask me if I'm in the mood to hear that. Right. You know, because people don't understand how we do transfer energies and things like that, and you do have to be mindful of what you're listening to and, you know, what kind of videos you're watching and things like that. So you, you have to... Um, you have to be mindful of what's in front of you, you right. know, what you're allowing into your space. Um, because you, you don't want that. So meditation is definitely a thing. Journaling, I'm very, very, very big on journaling. I um I enjoy that. Um outside of that, just being one with nature. Like I'm one of those people uh-huh. I don't if I didn't have to wear shoes, clothes, none of that, I wouldn't. I, I would understand. rather be in the woods. I like to be grounded. I have I like to be one with nature or I have to be by the water. So that's my piece. Um and just even in a chaotic moment, I will switch that energy around. So I'll take what may be a horrible moment and I'll just turn it around just so that I am protecting my peace and I'm able to move on. Right. I, I think for me, I find as you become older and more mature in life, that's when you realize how much your peace means to you. Right. Yeah, it's, it's, it's not about the money or the people or the material things is about you center yourself with you. And one of the, one of the ways that i find for myself to protect my peace is to find silence because in silence and meditation, you kind of get 
uh, that uh, that message, you know, that message that's sent to you from that spiritual realm, mm-hmm. because then you know how to deal with something or operate with something or how to approach the person that you, you know, that you talking to. Or like you say, Dominique, uh, or so your friends calling you and want to dump on you, but you're not there. And, it, and it's going to it's going to take your vibe away of where you at. But I do realize, like I say, the older you get in life. And you start realizing what is more valuable. And then you realize the most valuable thing you have is your peace, you know? And I find, I find my peace in silence. And sometimes people don't understand that because when you're silent, they think you're brushing them off. But then you have to un- get them to understand it's not about I'm brushing you off. It's about me finding my, my core, you know? <laughs> So what, what, what do y'all think? So, you know. I don't think, and I also, too, I think that when, it's funny because I remember when I first started dating my husband, he would come and he would play video games every day. And I used to get annoyed, like, why are you doing that? Like, this is what you're going to do every day you come home? But he told me that was his way of relaxing and getting to a place of peace. So once I learned that about him, I was okay with it. But at first I thought he was just ignoring me on purpose, which is right. a bad thing. Like, don't ignore me because I hate being ignored. But um, But when he explained to me, this is what this is what I have to do when I come home from work. And I think if, if you explain it to people, I just need an hour a day. Give me a second. Don't don't come bombarding me as soon as I walk in the door. If you explain it to people, then they they, they should be able to understand. You need that time. Yeah. And, and that's my that's my let me let me just relax for a minute. Let me get my head straight. And then we can talk afterwards. Yeah. But some people just don't like it. Yeah, they, they, they that woosah moment that you yes. need to, you know, it's, it's just like even when you're in a relationship or understanding, I need to understand what your day was like. You need to understand what my day was like. And sometimes maybe you might not want to speak on, I, I could, you could come in the house and I could say, how was your day? And and you might not want to talk right then and there, you know? And like you say, then it's not, not you rejecting me, but give me a moment. You know, I just walked in, give me a moment to woosah, you know, give me that moment to to get my thoughts together, you know, or you might turn around and say, well, how was your day? Well, I might not want to talk about how my day was. So you can't take it as though I'm I'm brushing you off or throwing you to the side. I think that a lot of time in order to protect your peace and you, you, you especially when you're in a relationship, you have to get your mate to understand who you are, just like you have to understand who they are. You know what I mean? And if you come to that kind of understanding, you tend, it's a little more easy to find your peace. The other thing is um, understanding what disrupts your peace. Mm-hmm. It is so vitally important to see what's unhealthy in your life. And what I mean is not from the outside, it's what I'm participating or practicing, you know, from me in the inside. Because what I'm talking about, do I have a peer, is there, there's a pure and healthy spirit that lies at the core of each of us. So from operating from that place, what value system am I operating from? Right. Am I operating from societal norms and environment and, and, and all this stuff that we are indoctrinated with and, and, and throwed off stuff, telling myself that this stuff is me when it's really not me. And because of the real me has a voice and will speak right to me if I am too indoctrinated with the unhealthy um, because I have a tendency sometimes I learn I can uh, uh, mistitle a thing right I can miss I, you know you got to identify the thing properly such as feelings we was talking about earlier I have a whole color-coded feelings chart right and and, and it's so vital because as a man because we was also talking about vulnerability right as a man you know, from the way we were brought up too, right? My easiest accessible emotion is anger. Mm. But all Dominique did was disappoint me. I don't know how to I express my disappointment by communication. You know, hey, Dominique, I was hoping that you did this or I expected you to do this, that, and other. And now I also suppress and withdraw. Mm. That's good. So one. now, that's a good one. That's so good. now, Dominic, or you know, you, Mr. Wolfie, y'all are like, so I must be in his in his feelings or something. So now you're making mockery of my condition. Mm-hmm. So now I put up another defense because now I'm offended. Yeah. Not only have you offended my so, soul, so, you offended my ego. And that elevates your. One is a deep man. That, 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 I'm here for that, it. I'm that, that, your, that elevates your. That elevates your. That elevates your position of anger then. The more they come, it seems like it's an attack. And like you say, in that color chart, if it's if it's 
white at that and it begins to the colors begin to go so as they begin to take what they think about you is making you angry and you're right you're starting to elevate what the anger actually is because that's the easiest thing defense Mm -hmm. because i don't have the ability to articulate what Mm -hmm. my values are Mm -hmm. so the anger the reason i said it's my most easily accessible because that's what i was prone to raised and saw a lot of loud but loud i saw as anger but it was like Set your ass down, y'all running around. Yeah. Anyway, so <laughs> what Ma- what Marky was saying, Lamar was saying about maturing. What did you call him? Lamar. What did you call him? Lamar. Lamar. I don't know what you said. No, keep going. Keep going. going. That's the next podcast, <laughs> <laughs> right? You know, I'm not trying to hurt, but you know, through maturing, right? I've learned. Yes, I have been a product of my environment, but I'm also a product of living in the wisdom of my past experience. Mm. Right. It's like it's 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 like the serenity prayer. Mm-hmm. You know, God yeah. grant me the wisdom to accept the things I cannot change, the courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. You you know, it's just like what you're saying. I always tell people this: the things that we have done, the past we have traveled in life is in us. You know, you did it, and you suppress it. But there are certain times when you're trying to protect that piece of, of tagging off what you just said. People can regurgitate that who you used to be. Mm. They can they can make you regurgitate it and come up, and you're trying to suppress that who you used to be. You know what I mean? It's just like uh, you know somebody can look at you, Dominique, and say, "Oh, she's so beautiful and and she's so kind," and but then. Hmm. They don't see the Marvin Hagler side of you. <laughs> you know what I mean? They they don't see the Marvin Hagler side. And when the Marvin Hagler side come, then it goes back with Tuan saying, then the anger coming because, but you you made me regurgitate that. You know, I suppress that because I am trying to be a different person, right? And and then when that person see that, I don't want to so much call the evil side of you, the anger side of you. They Then they want to, put you in certain categories or you this or you that. And I just think a lot of stuff comes from people not having understanding. I yeah. Go ahead. Well, I'm going to say this because I, I sometimes I believe that when people, when you have, when you're trying to be in a place of peace, right. And the person that, that knows you're trying to be there. Sometimes that's boring to them. Sometimes they need some kind of mm-hmm. head bumping, so they they yeah. cause problems. I was getting ready to ask you. That. I was getting ready to ask that to yeah. disrupt your peace because they're they're bored right. and they don't know how to be peaceful. So they do things that they know that's going to trigger you mm-hmm. and make the old man come back up. They they call it in church the old man, right? Make the old, make the old man come back up, right? Now the old man been he been asleep for a minute. He ain't gone. He's just sleeping. And that person just they're used to chaos so, and they, they dwell on chaos. And, and so they do shows, things like that. They do. And I feel like when it comes like when you see that, this is when you gauge your growth in those moments, right? Mm-hmm. Because you're able to say, Okay, yeah, I see what you're doing. Right, right. But you're not gonna get me out of character because I know who I used to be, I know where I am and I know where I'm trying to go. I know what I have to lose and I'm not gonna allow you to trigger me in that way. And if I am triggered, why am I triggered? Let's get to the bottom of that first. Secondly, um, how low am I really willing to go? Am I willing to potentially lose any and everything that I may have or what I've done or the growth that I've, you know, that I've, the stage of growth that I've gotten to? What am I going to do? Right. I'm going to protect my peace because guess what? I'm in the the inside of me. I may be burning with it. Like, ah, you know, I'm going to say something. But, you know, when I look at the bigger picture, it's like, yeah. Misery likes company because you got to understand it's right. trying to cause chaos. It's something in their life that isn't right. And for them, they're probably looking on the outside like, well, why are you so happy? Why are you so right, happy? Right, right, so right. You know what I mean? Yep. And so I need to throw a monkey wrench into all of that goodness. Yeah. It, it's just like my mother used to say. My mother used to say one of her favorite things was you can't argue by yourself. That's right. You're you know, right. you can't. But what you said, Dominique, I, I, I think has a lot of validity to it that. When you when you are trying to find your peace or you're in that peaceful moment, challenges are going to come to you because it's not about the other person. It's about you, you trying to change you, right. you know, and then you say you want to be in this peaceful place or you want to know how to deal with things differently. Well, you're going to get challenged. A lot of people think because I say it and that's the way it is. But no, it's, it's just like uh, you and I often talk, Audrey, about things we want to do business wise. 
Okay, we know in our minds what we do. We get up every morning, every day, hustling to do it. But the thing about it is our frustration comes sometimes because we don't want the challenges, you know, and the challenges are there. So when you're talking about peace and vulnerability, you're going to have challenges because I think one of the hardest things on this planet is to find peace because we got our focus and our minds on so many other things that we think will make us happy. And I always say this, happy derives from the word happen. Mm -hmm. You only happy because what's happening. Mm -hmm. So I think when it's not happening, you know how, so now I understand the word joy because joy is forever. And that's what we're trying to find. We, you know, it's just like when a person died, we say what? They at peace. They at peace. We, we don't know whether they got woes laying there, but we say they at peace. But none of us willing to take that kind of peace. <laughs> none of us not are willing to take that kind of peace. Some of us are, but not both yeah. of us. You know. So the other thing is too, right? Is you know how do we redefine things? Because we can be so caught up in the norms, right? And open up Google. And Google will say, peace is this. And I don't identify because it's not what I'm interpreting what my peace is. Mm -hmm. And because of the society, I may be, I, I may feel fearful to really express what my peace is. My peace ain't got to be your peace. And my peace ain't got to be Google's peace. My peace is my peace. Mm -hmm. This is what's bringing me peace. Because it's so vitally important that we learn how to redefine ourselves from a lot of the unhealthy beliefs we've been taught and grew up on. Right. Mm -hmm. And we stand on non-existent virtues and expect people to accept it. Mm -hmm. Right. You know? And and this is the other thing going around this vulnerability uh, 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 um, word, right? How can I, as a, as a black man, right? How can you help me, right? Feel trust, the trust that I need to feel to be able to expose some of the most horrible decisions and actions that I've made in my life. And the trust comes in when I can feel that when you get pissed off at me, you're not going to poke me with my most shameful, mm. you know, ugly moments. Mm -hmm. And I'm not even in that moment. I still have to live with the shame and the guilt of things. And I got to go to God to remove it and, and all that kind of stuff. How? Because that is a valuable, vulnerability is a valuable place yeah. in a relationship. And, I, and so how do we get there? And I think that the more vulnerable that people think about it. I think the more, I, I, think, about it. I think the more vulnerable you can be. And as a black man, being vulnerable with your mate, whether it's girlfriend, boyfriend, whether it's husband, wife, I think the more vulnerable you can be and the more understanding that person can be, and like you say, not attack you with it, I think it builds a stronger place of protection. I think it builds a stronger place of peace because it's like a lot of times you could take people that's in relationships and they say, oh, I want I, will, I want you to be my best, or I'm married to my best friend, or I'm dating my best friend. In reality, are you really dating your best friend? Are you really willing to open up? Because things that you may be tell your friend, you can't go back and tell your mate. And if you really are being vulnerable, the same thing I'm able to tell my mate, I should be able to, I mean, the same thing I'm telling my friend, I should be able to tell my mate. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but you know, I think, I think when you, when you recognize who a person is, remember my Angela said when a person show you who they are, believe them, right? So if you recognize that, that person is not going to take your information and, and nurture it, that's that's when you shut down. Like I'm not going to be open and, and vulnerable with you when I know that that you're not going to be accepting. You're judgmental. You know you like to bring up from the past. You mm -hmm. know you are that person. I'm I, I'm not going to do it. Yeah. So that that right there be, becomes this wall that probably will be there forever. Mm -hmm. Now I got to go talk to my girl because I can't help you about that. Because I already know you. So, do, do, do you think that takes away a part of your relationship or your marriage? Do, well, that not thing a whole of, lot, but a little bit. Because I don't think that we tell our partners everything. I, I just don't. There are some things that I'm sure that your partner don't know, your partner don't know, your partner don't know, mine don't know, and I would never tell. It's, I just won't. But there are some things that my girls know that they don't know, and there's some things he know that they don't know. So, I don't think you tell a person everything. Right. And that's that's going back to those societal norms that you're talking about. It's just like I said, I find my peace in being silent. 
because I know I'm the person that 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 what is in my belly can come up. I know oh, that man. that that old man and that and that's not the person I want anybody to visit. And honestly, when it comes to being vulnerable and you know, I feel like it's not even healthy to lay all of that on your partner. Even though you may have an open door to do so, I feel like you do have to kind of, you know, because what happens if that person, you know, leaves? Yeah. What happens if that person, you know, passes away? You've now put everything into this one person, and now who do you have? Who do you have to confide in? Because you've spent so much time putting it all here where, you know, you should be able to talk to your homegirls or your homeboys or your mama or your daddy or whoever it is that you want to talk to in in different spaces. Right, because some people are there for that reason. Your your partner does not necessarily have to be your everything. Right, and I don't really think it's healthy for them to be your everything. Right. Um, I know people like to use that term of "you are my everything." However, though, <laughs> I personally don't feel like that's a good. And I'm a hundred percent in agreement with you. I don't. I need mm-hmm. to be able to balance it out, some you know. Um, I- but I think when it comes to creating a vulnerable space, and I for myself because I do consider myself a very safe space um for my partner and i think that comes with my understanding of who i am and my emotions and you know understanding how how the world you know even though he's a man i'm a woman and our our struggles may be different however though we do we are one in the same in a sense and so Creating that space of allowing you to have your moment with me, and that's okay. There, I'm not judging you. I am, if anything, I'm redirecting you. Um, I am leading you in that moment. Um, just making it so that you know the world's cool already. So when you come home, I don't want that. I don't want. I don't want to have to do that. I don't want to cuss you out and fight and all that. I don't want to do that. So creating a space where you know you're not being judged. Um, but that's a person that has done a lot of work on themselves, right? That's true. Because when you think about that, think about what you just said. I need you to come home and feel like you're in a safe space. Mm-hmm. I don't want I don't want to be a part of the world that's going to bring you down. Right. You know, I'm here to help you, build you up, that kind of thing. But that's a person who has taken the, right. taken the time to do a lot of work on themselves and are, are very self-aware about who they are mm-hmm. and what they bring to the table. Not everybody can do that. Right. And then right. on the flip side of that, too, that person has to be willing to allow you to be that safe space mm. because you can, I can say that all day, but if you haven't got to that point with yourself where you're ready to say, okay, you're my safe space. Mm-hmm. You are my safe space. Mm-hmm. Um, I feel like I can lay it all here. Um, and there is this one, um, uh, it's this song called conversational piece and it's by June Tober. And it's such a beautiful song because that's pretty much what right. she says. She says, you know, lay all your kids on my pillow. Like I'm going to, I'm going to be, here. you don't have to worry about it. Um, I've pretty much made myself a safe space. So when you come in here, I want you to just lay it all out. So, so let me throw this, this, this out here. Let me throw this out here and saying all that we have said and finding that safe space and that vulnerability and some of the things that you may want to be vulnerable about may be some things that you've done in the past, right? Mm-hmm. Now, do you think, and I'm kind of going where you going, Dominique, I don't think that you need to share everything with your mate or significant other because sometimes you've been places they haven't been and they might not even understand it. They might try to understand it, but never understand it. Like, you know, you you could have been an ex addict, an ex alcoholic. Uh, you could have been a ex whatever, mm-hmm. and they never been there. And you come and say, "Well, hey, you know what? I'm having this tough time, this tough day. Let me tell you why." And then you start spilling this on them, but they don't. They can't even relate to it because they haven't been there. Right. So how do y'all feel about that? Well, maybe not even been there. Maybe in that environment because. I, I, I've never been locked up, but I grew up in the hood, so I know what that looks like. You know, I've known people who've been locked up. I've visited people in prison, you know, so I know what that looks like. But for somebody who has never even, I, I'll give you a prime example. I was in a meeting last, week before last, and this detective woman was there. And she had to go to Forsyth County um, for a... Um, uh, claim what a, uh, a workman's comp claim, right? And they say first foresight is really, really prejudiced. Like they're still living in 1900. 
and she said she had to go there and she asked this guy she was doing surveillance she said can i can i park here in front of your house and he said yeah white man and she said he she parked there she said the next day she got back to park again to surveil the, the guy house across the street he came out he said i can't let you park here so the kkk came and told me if i let you park here it's gonna be trouble for me and she said she said oh well i don't, don't want to get you any trouble so he said well, let me can i ask you one thing she said what let me can i touch your face he ain't never been around black folks in his life. Wow. So she said, yeah. So she said he touched her face and then he asked her, can I hug you? So he's never been around black people. So you're not in that environment. So she's talking to him. He sees that she's black. You know, she, the skin color is just different. But if you've never been around that stuff and, and you've never been exposed to certain things, that's anything in life. You don't know how to handle it. So when people are talking to you about it, especially I, I was at a, at a party Saturday and the woman was diehard bougie. And I told her, stop being bougie. And um, But she had never been exposed to certain things because she grew up a certain kind of way. Right. And so she grew up very bougie. And here I am, like, did not grow up bougie. And like, stop being bougie. And she was laughing because she couldn't believe I said that to her. But I knew she wasn't exposed. And I knew the fact that what she was saying to me, she was not doing something because she felt like it was going to make her look a certain way. And I was like, that's why I didn't talk to you. That's why you weren't on my show because you was being bougie. Right, right, you know? right, so right. It's, a, it's the exposure to certain things. You may not have actually lived it, but were you ever exposed to it? Right, and even with that, even if you haven't experienced it, right, um, you, I think when you're willing to get an understanding, mm -hmm. that is, that's, that's the part right there. I, you know, like my mom said, I've never been to jail now. You, you know, I I may not have been there, but let me ask you a few questions so I can understand. So maybe now I can kind of get an idea, you know, um, of how all of this works, right? How this went, why is this like this, why you did that, what happened? Um, it's asking those questions. Right, right, right. And understanding. And so that I feel like that's how you get around that. You got to, even though you may not have experienced that, it's like, Okay, well, let me let me just ask the necessary questions just so I can get a better idea of where you coming from with it. But ask with a pure heart, too. Don't yeah. ask because you want to hold it against the person later. Right. And, right. And, and let me say this. In the word of understanding, the word of understanding, because your understanding might be different than my understanding, right? But we need to understand that we agree to disagree or we agree to agree. That's understanding that... I say, Dominique, I understand and I agree to disagree. So we still understand. Mm -hmm. I might can't relate, but I understand. Mm -hmm. Like you say, if I start, if I've never been to prison and I start asking you, well, do they really do this in prison or do they really do that in prison? And you look and, and the person may be looking at you like, are you kidding me? Because they might not have never experienced that in prison. Right. But you know what? Society, as you say, have put these images in our head of what happens in prison. Mm -hmm. And like I can I can speak upon this. I used to be a correction officer in a federal prison. Those things do happen, but they happen because you want them to happen. Mm -hmm. It don't it don't happen because somebody grabbing you and doing this to you and doing that to you because they trying to figure it out too. Why they in there? But in understanding, we all have to understand what the word understanding means because you can say I understand, but you don't understand from my viewpoint. Mm -hmm. You you don't understand. I might not understand from your viewpoint, mm -hmm. but what we do understand that I agree to disagree or I agree to agree. And, and that comes to that comes to the whole dynamics of understanding. That comes to a place of how am I listening? Am I listening from a a, a place of critical listening, informational listening? How am I listening to you? Because when I'm listening from a place of critical, it's like five, six, nine different types of listening. You can Google it, right? When I'm listening from that critical place. I'm really listening to respond to dissect while you're talking. I already made up in my mind what the answer is. Mm -hmm. But when I'm listening from an informational standpoint, I'm listening listening from a principal place of empathy. Okay. That's how I put myself into your shoes through empathy. I ain't even, for instance, we always use an example, y'all. Uh, a male doctor has never had a baby, but he can help the woman deliver one. So, you know, he has a specific thing of understanding. And it, you met, you said something early, Audrey, about the type of work one has to do on themselves, right? And it takes a tremendous amount of continuous work on oneself, right, to be able to strip away self-righteousness, mm -hmm. judgment, 
degrees of fear. I got to be heard. I'm right, you wrong. All that kind of stuff to get to the place of understanding. Because for real, for real, when I start to really evaluate and process stuff, what's really happening in your life really has no bearing or effect on mine. So why do I need to be bent all out of damn shape? That one shape right. again. Right, because okay, <laughs> because it's the thing is, it's not to react, it's to respond. Just want to say that one Don't more react. Time we ain't going to take back. I forgot what I said. <laughs> <laughs> um, so you don't need to be bent out of shape for somebody else. Right. You don't. Why? When I when you process what's what's happening, even in the moment, right? Do I need to respond to these emotions that's happening? Because that's what I'm really responding to. I'm not really responding to what you're saying. I'm real. I'm responding to what I feel about what you're saying. Mm-hmm. But that's okay. always go back to what I say about a text message. Yeah. Right. Somebody that's text right. messages you. You read that with your emotion and your feelings. That's right. that's yeah. that's so, so because it's not, it's not with that person. Because if I didn't say it, and all I did was text message you. You read it with your emotions. Mm-hmm. You know, you could read it though. That person's mad. You could read as though, oh, they love me. They could be cussing you out. You don't know because you're reading it with your emotions. The thing is, when I say, you know, uh, when I'm responding to you from my emotion, and you say to one, that's not what I meant. Right. See, that's not what I meant. That's not even what I meant. Because I wasn't from a, I wasn't in a place of informational listening. I was critical about it. You know, and, and all this goes back to something else you said about an old church singing. When we're talking about our peace and uh, me as a man feeling safe, being vulnerable and everything, I go to that principle of being evenly yoked. Because mm-hmm. I can look at you and I'll be like, ooh, we, you meet all the physical requirements and mm-hmm. pre- preferences and everything, right? Mm-hmm. But the inside of you is so bougie and self-righteous and take care of me and me, 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 me. Yeah, I'll be like, I want that. No, you understand? Yes. So I've learned to build. I was talking to a friend of mine who is a fitness trainer in Philly. Her name Tish, right? She, we were talking about building a friendship. You know, you were just talking about I'm, I'm in a relationship with my best friend, but I can believe in love at first sight. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And I can justify it by old African principle and, and, and practices. You know, your mother and your father bring you to me. My brother bring you to me. We jump the bring we in love. Right. You know what I mean? But the whole thing is, we haven't made any con- connection. <laughs> and this this peace and this vulnerability and this trust and all this stuff is really <laughs> built in real connection. Because I may desire love, but do I have a companion? Mm-hmm. I may want sex. Do I understand what intimacy is? Don't say that part again. You you, you know, because, mm-hmm. you know, That's and these are some of the things that we really have to, as a community, go back to our children, grandchildren, ourselves, and so forth and so forth, and teach and re reinstill these values and these practices, you know what I mean? Because when it's all said and done, I still believe in this vulnerable and this peace stuff that we're talking about. Until that black man actually stands up in his man's shoes and come back into the family, be the leader, and be the leader in the community, that as a people, we're going to be spinning our wheels and all this insanity is going to continue to plague and pillage the village and damage us as a people. So I'm one of these people, I, you know, other thing about, real quick, uh, my friend Tish, we were talking about um, having conversations even in the uncomfortable conversations, mm-hmm. to build those connections, right? And the other thing is, I'm the I'm I'm the man, not the kind of man. I'm the man that I really, really, really don't really care about all the stuff you may have done in your past. Yeah, because it has I, no I bearing on the present. Right. And a lot of people suck in that through that straw of trying to find out what your past was. So you know what I mean? I, I, I think that you need to know some things you about do. a person. You some do. things, but certain things I think you don't need to know. Yeah, like you know what I mean? Men you can bend with. And all the, you but, don't need to know your body count. Right. It, it, it's just like, <laughs> it's just like, you know, some some people, some people have to come to the realization of this too. If If the same thing keep occurring in your life, circle that circle keep occurring in your life you know whether it's the dating whether it's the people you around whether it's the crowd you're you have to understand one thing there's one common denominator in that whole equation and that's you so you it's easy for you 
to take and lose your peace, lose your vulnerability on blaming other people Mm -hmm. because you don't want to accept the fact that it's you. you. Mm -hmm. And until you find that inner peace in you, it's always going to be somebody else. It's never going to be you. Mm You know, and I think a lot of times that's what we have to do that sometimes. And like I say, my peace is found in silence. And I think sometimes we have to sit in silence to find who we really are, you know, because I heard something uh, yesterday. I was on social media and they was talking to uh, they was talking to your boy, uh, Dominique, uh, Kevin Gates. And he was talking about he, he they talked about he, he, he was telling them he fast for 42 days just on liquids. Right. But he was trying to tell them, you know what, I fast. He was fasting and praying and that uh, from a higher power, as he put it, began to speak to him him from a spiritual realm, right? And he said, he, he really didn't get into it. He said, because of, when I tell people this, they can't relate. They can't relate because we live in this societal thing like, okay, you doing, you going crazy. You know what I mean? But it's that in a person he's starting to discover, you know what I mean? And those, 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 those spirits, because we're spiritual beings in reality, we're spiritual beings living in a fleshly body. Right. Mm -hmm. And it's just like, it's just like even the word tell us, you know what, when you're trying to find your peace, when you're trying to give up your, I mean, or or want to give your vulnerability up, it it even in in the Bible tell you, go speak to other believers. Mm -hmm. You know, you, you, you can't, you can't go share things with people that ain't on your level. Right. You know what I mean? They so you they will never ever comprehend it. They will never ever come. I don't care what it is. If 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 it like like I said earlier, you and I, Audrey, we die hard. We got that entrepreneurial spirit and we chasing it, right? Mm-hmm. And there's some people that will never ever believe they're like, man, yo, you crazy to get up every morning and do that. Or why are you out here so late? Or why are you doing this? And why not? And they can't never relate, because you know what? Some people get accustomed to a nine to five. Some people get accustomed. It ain't about the nine to five. It's about the security. And when you're an entrepreneur, they ain't really no security. You know what I mean? Because you can build a big corporation and guess what? It could be, it could be a bad month and your whole strategy got to change. But I think that in order to find your peace, in order to be vulnerable, you got to know who you are. Absolutely, absolutely. Because I was going to say, let's dress, let's let's dress this this word up in its proper clothes. To me, it's called self acceptance. I got to be able to accept myself, right? Assets and liabilities. When I'm able to, add, you know, accept myself as I am, insecurities, inadequacies, you know, what I mean, all these other, you know, great abilities and everything. I'm cool in my skin mm-hmm. because in order to be disturbed, you got to be disturbable. Right. And when I'm in that place of peace and self acceptance, I know God got me. I know I'm on my path. I'm living in purpose and meaning. You can't touch me. And when people see me and experience me in that in that in that position, in that mode, Mark Lamar. Ah. <laughs> right. People say, You cocky, you earned it. See, back to what you just said. You don't understand. Yeah. See, you don't understand because I don't deal in pseudo spirituality. Right. And then people can only accept you as far as they accept themselves, like you said. So, of course, you're not going to accept me at this high level because you you aren't there yet. So, I can't ex- I can't expect you to a- accept me. If you you're not even there yet. You haven't even accepted who you are. So, you still find your demons, and now you see my light. You want to dim it because you don't understand what my light, why my light shines so bright. You know what I mean? It get a little tough. So, no, I can completely, 110% agree with you on that. And, and, and the other thing is, right, sacrifice is so important. It's one of the main ingredients to all this stuff that we're talking about. You know what I mean? Because self-centeredness is, is self-obsession is really the core of a lot of us, right? You know, and sacrifice gives me the ability to kill or diminish that's that core of self-obsession where it's about me it's something when your heart trans trans when you have a transformation in your heart from a place of selfishness and me to a place of a servant right mm-hmm. you know serving others opens the door to a whole lot of blessings yeah when you're just doing stuff for people and all that kind of stuff and with, with no comeback Right. That's I always say that. No Whatever comeback. you do, do it from your heart. Yeah. With, with no comeback. Do it from your but heart. It's something 
in those moments, those, those silent moments, those things that bring your tears to you when you know you're on the path, when you're operating in God's will, and it, you know, you, you, you in that place and you just say, thank you, God. Let, let, let me ask you this and then we, then we will close out. And I, this is directed to the women when people think about it. Uh, Watch out now. How in being in a marriage or relationship and the vulnerability that we have talked about, how do you perceive it when you see a man cry? Well, I mean, it's healthy for men to cry now. If you crying all the time, you got to go get some help. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's what I was about to say. Um, yeah. Well, yeah, it's part. healthy. It's healthy. I don't. I don't. I don't look at that. Do you look at it as a weakness? I do not. And I was just about to say that I don't look at that as a weakness. But if you are always crying, there is some mental stuff happening there that you need to go get. You For know, sure. go get that checked out. Because I don't know nobody that's just crying all the time about everything. And if if that's the case, that's a turn off. So no, I'm just gonna keep it real. That, that's well, well, let let Dominique go. Let, me, that's a turn off for me. Like you crying all the time. Like I get you. What's all the time? All, all the time. time. All, the, right. all right, everything. Dominique, give me give me your outlook. Everything. I mean, I I'm, I have to agree. Um, and I have experienced. Mm -hmm. You know, I have experienced. And uh, I was like, he crying again. <laughs> you know, this was like an everyday occurrence, and I'm like, what is going on? <laughs> you know. I actually had two of them, and I was just like, I don't really understand what's happening here. And again, I think I've always kind of drew in certain kind of people. I have a healing spirit, and I understand that about myself. However, though, I can't take the crying too much thing. And so at that point, it's like we need to dig a little bit deeper and see why, why are you crying every day? Oh, now, I agree what? with that. Every day, you need something, something's like, going on. It's too much. So let me ask a question. <laughs> let, me, let, let, me, let, me, let me follow up. Let me follow up real quick there. So, so I work for myself too, right? And I believe when you work for yourself, there's really eight days and twenty eight hours in a day, right? Right. Right. So when I when I come home, when I'm in a relationship or whatever we doing, when I come home, you saying I got somebody for you? <laughs> Go ahead. I'm so sorry. When I come, when I come in, right? And just want to lay my head in that sacred place, which is your bosom, mm -hmm. okay. right? So I can, yeah. That's why women hold babies like this because you get sued you better, from the rapid. You better preach it anyway. <laughs> that safe place, so I can rejuvenate this back to the vulnerability. You know, bay. It, someday I got this saying: some days you get the bad, some days the bad get you. I said the bad and turned the fur off me today, mm -hmm. and I just want to lay my head in your bosom. And, and everything, you could strike out this little lump on the back of my head. You can, you know, stroke my little lump right here. and Because you know, you trusted me. You've seen my consistency. Yeah. That I'm going to get back up and the bear going to have trouble the next day. Mm. Even though he get me again the next day. You know, do, you do, do y'all, you know, because I'm, I'm putting that out there. But are you crying every day? Because I'm, I'm not crying. I'm not physically crying. No, that's what, yeah, this yeah, is not physical. I, I, got, I got the physically crying. I agree with you, okay. something. Or oh, the crying out. And it is, when, I guess... And, and I think I just said this this week on the phone with my mother. It's it's a difference when I see that you're trying, right? And I understand your frustration, opposed to you just what you want. You you I I, I think I understand yeah, what you're saying. So so from your perspective, I can understand you're crying, right? But <laughs> wait, wait a minute, listen. What I'm getting ready to say it's gonna make sense. Like I can understand your crying, but when you fight in that bed, to come have to cry every day because you got to fight that. You know that bad air. What are you going to do Absolutely. to fight the bear? Right. You know I don't need you to walk in here every day. It's just like when we were growing up, we had bullies in our neighborhood and stuff like that. It was my mother had five boys and one girl, right? There were people that one of my younger brother people was terrorized of him, right? He was the bear. There were people in the neighborhood that was terrorized him. He was the bear. And, but there was also people that we were terrorized of. But if something come home and you walk in the house crying, my mother like, what are you crying for? Or so-and-so down the street, guess what? You had to go back. All five of these boys, now all five has got to go down there and fight that bear. You know why? Because you ain't coming in this house crying again. 
So when I get what you say, but if you come in here every day crying and crying and crying, and you keep telling me it's about that bear down the street, well, guess what? You need to find a way to defeat that bear. Right. You need to find a way to defeat that bear, and that's why I'm getting down that same street where the bear is. That part. Well, I'm saying no matter no matter how you got to win. The bear again, so you need to you need to come up with a solution Shin, on how to handle I, the bear. Right, because if and you I'm see me. And, you one time now, right? I'm, we're gonna try to. I'm gonna have a game plan worked out because that's what women do. Right. Give us something, we create a game plan. We create a game plan, right? So I'm gonna say, boom. You gonna throw it here, and you gonna get the bed, you gonna knock the bed down here. You better put a sansom and I mean a, a sansom yeah. on because my thing. If you see me in the bed fighting, you better help the bed. Right. So yeah. <laughs> so I'm gonna I'm gonna come you up with this. Help the <laughs> You we gonna come up with a game plan the first time. Now you keep you keep on now. At that point, then I I had I don't un, I'm, my level of empathy is no longer gonna hold right. In space so I get it. Like, what are you doing? Right. So the crying every day is a no. It's a no. It's a no. Sorry. If we got to fight the bear, let's come up with a plan to fight the bear. Or you need to come up with a plan to fight the bear. But don't walk in this house crying again. No. You know what I mean? And I think, I think, I think, I think that sometimes they think women are a little too harsh. Because we say stuff like that, but it, that's not sexy, especially black women. Yeah, they definitely come for us for saying stuff like that. But it's like we fighting our own battles too. So you and want you me? Crying to, you day. crying every day? I gotta go out here and, and fight you know, your battles, fight your battle and mine and the kids and whatever else. And, and, you know? I, and I guarantee you, nine times out of ten, what you're crying about ain't even what you're crying about. You think that's what you're crying about, and right. so you fight the battle, you kill the first bear, and you still crying. Right. What's crying about now? Right. Like that. Well, I, and, I, and I get it because. I think a man's man finds a way to beat the bear. Yeah, I agree. I think that's yeah, that's yeah. just my perception. Yeah, that man, sure. feels the way to fight. That that's that's my perception. But you know, we want to thank our guests for being on and talking about finding that place of peace, that protection of your peace. No, not necessarily about the other person, but your peace. Because if you find your peace, you can bring other people to peace. Maybe. Maybe. Uh, and then, you know, that of being a man or black man, white man, any man, and being able to be vulnerable with your mate, being able to be, uh, have a sacred place to go to be vulnerable. So we just want to close out the show thanking our guests and my brother Tawan for your, your inspiration. Uh, you, and, 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 uh, Dominique, we know you love these kind of subjects. We know you love these kind of subjects. Yeah, and then ha- and having Miss Audrey in the house, that's always a pleasure to have Miss Audrey in the house. And we just want to tell y'all guys, hey, please keep listening to People Think About It. You can go to peoplethinkaboutit.com. You can go to peoplethinkaboutit at gmail.com. Listen to us every Wednesday. We release a new show at 8 p.m. You, we on Instagram, we on Apple, we on all the podcast outlets. And guess what? Miss Audrey, maybe a while ago, set us up with Lexa. So you can go say, Lexa, put up people think about it. So if we would. If we, you missed the last episode, go pick up the, go check out the last episode. Right. Just say, Alexa. Play good morning. I'm about to say good morning, Gwinnett. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Think about it. So, so also listen. Also listen to Miss Audrey show. Oh, uh, good morning, Gwinnett. She lets you know what's happening in Gwinnett with the uh the electoral people, the people that's trying to get in office that don't talk to us after they get in office. But we, that's another. <laughs> that's a whole other subject. And Miss Dominique just started a new uh uh the word of the day. Yes. So um, you can find me on underscore Dolly Said It, and that's on IG. I do that every Tuesday and Thursday where I am giving you the word of the day. And you can also find me every Thursday at 7 p.m. on Dolly Said It Podcast. I am your girl, your go-to girl for everything is growth. And you can hear her on on Wednesdays on People <laughs> Think About It. So she's yeah. the fly girl. <laughs> So we want to just thank you guys for listening to People Think About It. We appreciate you. Subscribe. Go to our part page. Hey, listen to People Think About It. Thank you for listening.